Start of Part 1 What the Bible Says About Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Ahmed Didat Chapter 1 My First Major Encounter Say, do you see whether this message be from Allah and yet you reject it and a witness from among the children of Israel bore witness of one like him? Surah Ahqaf, Chapter 46, Verse 10 Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the subject of this evening talk what the Bible says about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will no doubt come as a surprise to many of you because the speaker is a Muslim. How does it come about that a Muslim happens to be expounding prophecies from the Jewish and Christian scriptures? As a young man about 30 years ago, I attended a series of religious lectures by a Christian theologian, a certain Reverend Hitton at the Theatre Royal Durban. This reverend gentleman was expounding biblical prophecies. He went on to prove that the Christian Bible foretold the rise of Soviet Russia and the last days. At one stage he went to the extent of proving that his holy book did not leave the Pope out of its predictions. He expatiated vigorously in order to convince his audience that the beast 666 mentioned in the book of Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, was the Pope, who was the vicar of Christ on earth. It is not befitting for us Muslims to enter into this controversy between the Roman Catholics and the Protestants. By the way, the latest Christian exposition of the beast 666 of the Christian Bible is Dr. Henry Kissinger. Christian scholars are ingenious and indefatigable in their efforts to prove the case. Reverend Hitton's letters led me to ask that if the Bible foretold so many things, not even excluding the Pope and Israel, then surely it must have something to say about the greatest benefactor of mankind, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. As a youngster, I set out to search for an answer. I met priest after priest, attended lectures and read everything that I could lay my hands relating to the field of Bible prophecies. Tonight I am going to narrate to you one of these interviews with the Domini of the Dutch Reformed Church. I was invited to the Transvaal to deliver a talk on the occasion of the birthday celebration of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, knowing that in that province of the Republic of South Africa the Afrikaans language is widely spoken. Even by my own people, I felt that I ought to acquire a smattering of this language so as to feel a little more at home with the people. I opened the telephone directory and began phoning the Afrikaans-speaking churches. I indicated my purpose to the priests that I was interested in having a dialogue with them, but they all refused my request with plausible excuses. Number 13 was my lucky number. The 13th call brought me pleasure and relief. A Domini Van Heerden agreed to meet me at his home on the Saturday afternoon that I was to leave for the Transvaal. He received me on his veranda with a friendly welcome. He said if I did not mind, he would like his father-in-law from the Free State, a 70-year-old man, to join us in the discussion. I did not mind. The three of us settled down in the Dominee's library. I posed the question, What does the Bible say about Muhammad wasallam? Without hesitation he answered, Nothing. I asked, Why nothing? According to your interpretation, the Bible has so many things to say about the rise of Soviet Russia and about the last days and even about the Pope of the Roman Catholics. He said, Yes. But there was nothing about Muhammad. I asked again, why nothing? Surely this man Muhammad, who had been responsible for the bringing into being a worldwide community of millions of believers, who on his authority believe in 1. The miraculous birth of Jesus, 2. That Jesus is the Messiah, 3. 
that he gave life to the dead by God's permission, and that he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. Surely this book, the Bible, must have something to say about this great leader of men, who spoke so well of Jesus and his mother Mary, peace be upon them both. The old man from the free state replied, My son, I have been reading the Bible for the past fifty years, and if there was any mention of him, I would have known it. I inquired, According to you, are there not hundreds of prophecies regarding the coming of Jesus in the Old Testament? The Domini interjected, Not hundreds, but thousands. I said, I am not going to dispute the thousand and one prophecies in the Old Testament regarding the coming of Jesus Christ, because the whole Muslim world has already accepted him without the testimony of any biblical prophecy. We Muslims have accepted the de facto Jesus on the authority of Muhammad alone. And there are in the world today no less than 900 million followers of Muhammad who love, respect and revere this great messenger of God, Jesus Christ, without having the Christians to convince them by means of their biblical dialects. Out of the thousands of prophecies referred to, can you please give me just one single prophecy where Jesus is mentioned by name? The term Messiah, translated as Christ, is not a name but a title. Is there a single prophecy where it says that the name of the Messiah will be Jesus and that his mother's name will be Mary, that his supposed father will be Joseph the carpenter, that he will be born in the reign of Herod the king, etc., etc.? No, there are no such details. Then how can you conclude that those thousand prophecies refer to Jesus? The Domini replied, You see, prophecies are word pictures of something that is going to happen in the future. When that thing actually comes to pass, we see vividly in these prophecies the fulfillment of what had been predicted in the past. I said, what you actually do is that you deduce, you reason, you put two and two together. He said, yes. I said, if this is what you have to do with a thousand prophecies to justify your claim with regards to the genuineness of Jesus, why should we not adopt the very same system for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Domini agreed that it was a fair proposition, a reasonable way of dealing with the problem. I asked him to open up Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, the fifth of the Christian and Jewish Bibles, which he did. I read from memory the verse in Afrikaans because this was my purpose in having a little practice with the language of the ruling race in South Africa. In Prophet Sal Ekvir Hulle, Vervek Ueti Mit Van Hul Brer, Suzi Yes, in Exal my word in Saimundle, in his sal an holse, alles wat ek hom beveel. Deuteronomy 18.18 The English translation reads as follows. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Holy Bible, Deuteronomy 18.18 Having recited the verse in Afrikaans, I apologized for my uncertain pronunciation. The Domini assured me that I was doing fine. I inquired, To whom does this prophecy refer? Without the slightest hesitation, he answered, Jesus. I asked, Why Jesus? His name is not mentioned here. The Domini replied, Since prophecies are word pictures of something that is going to happen in the future, we find that the wordings of this verse adequately describe him. You see, the most important word of this prophecy are Suz ye yes, like unto thee, like you, like Moses, and Jesus is like Moses. I questioned, in which way is Jesus like Moses? The answer was, in the first place, Moses was a Jew, and Jesus was also a Jew. Secondly, Moses was a prophet and Jesus was also a prophet. Therefore Jesus is like Moses, and that is exactly what God had foretold so. Suzy yes. Can you think of any other similarities between Moses and Jesus? I asked. The Domini said, 
that he could not think of any. I replied, if these are the only two criteria for discovering a candidate for this prophecy of Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, then in that case this criteria could fit any or one of the following biblical personages after Moses. Solomon, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Malachi, John the Baptist, etc. Because they were also all Jews, as well as prophets. Why should we not apply this prophecy to any one of these prophets, and why only to Jesus? Why should we make fish of one and fowl of another? The Domini had no reply. I continued, you see, my conclusions are that Jesus is most unlike Moses, and if I am wrong, I would like you to correct me. So saying, I reasoned with him. In the first place, Jesus is not like Moses, because according to you, Jesus is a God, but Moses is not God. Is this true? He said, yes. I said, therefore Jesus is not like Moses. Secondly, according to you, Jesus died for the sins of the world, but Moses did not have to die for the sins of the world. Is this true? He again said, yes. I said, therefore Jesus is not like Moses. Thirdly, according to you, Jesus went to hell for three days, but Moses did not have to go there. Is this true? He answered meekly, yes. I concluded, therefore Jesus is not like Moses. But Domini, I continued, these are not hard facts, solid facts, tangible facts. They are mere matters of belief over which the little ones can stumble and fall. Let us discuss something very simple, very easy, that if your little ones are called in to hear the discussion, they would have no difficulty in following it. Shall we? The Domini was quite happy at the suggestion. End of chapter 1